All right, so welcome to the video on cold showers, uh, specifically called the Wim Hof Method. So this is gonna be a very good video for anybody who has autoimmune conditions or inflammatory conditions because this is not the cure-all, but this is definitely something for symptom management, among other things. As always, we're gonna go over three research papers, three books, and I'm gonna give you a ton of information that hopefully doesn't overwhelm you. If you decide to read the books and research, it shouldn't overwhelm you. But it's very basic, very simple, very straightforward. And side note real fast, when we started getting into genomics, I recognized interleukin-6. Oh, okay, that's something that like pops up in depression, but check this out. So some people have gene expressions that have over here, you know, slide myself this way, that have higher level than normal. So higher levels of pro-inflammatory cytokines in their body than the average human being. And check out one of the things that the Wim Hof method does. So real quick, on a genomics test, it's not whether, you know, eat these foods, all that. It's like, hey, maybe you should consider trying something like the Wim Hof method. Now some background with the Wim Hof method, how this was kind of first discovered, basically, read the book they're going to learn a lot about his story how he found this out it's kind of heartbreaking but it's a really good story so first you're going to want to read the wim hof method book we'll show you that one on amazon here but basically the way that this became mainstream it's in med school textbooks now it wasn't years ago because it just wasn't relevant but they took a bunch of people and they injected an endotoxin in them to be exact i forget which one it was i think it was like e coli or something but through like a third eye meditation, as you can see right here, third eye meditations, and then also through subsequent breathing exercises. So there's your third eye, there's your breathing techniques, and then, you know, followed by hyperventilation and breath retention. So basically there was 400 people in a study and they were all injected with the same thing. And he was the only person that didn't have responses from it. And then they were kind of curious why. And he's like, I've learned how to control my immune system. And when someone says they've learned how to control an immune system that can't be controlled, doctors are kind of like, well, what the hell does that mean? And then basically what happened from there is they took a couple people out of that trial. He taught them his methods and they redid the test. And all of the people that he taught the method to had the lack of response as well. So where they were supposed to have a response to the toxins, they didn't because their immune system was much higher than the average human being. So with the interleukin-6, you can see that right here, anti-inflammatory cytokine interleukin-10 increased more rapidly after endotoxin administration, correlated strongly with the epinephrine levels and were higher. So if you don't know what epinephrine is, just give it a Google. This is self-study, self-learn. You don't know what that word is, learn that word. Levels of pro-inflammatory mediators. So the pro-inflammatory mediators in the body right, where you may have higher levels of interleukin-6, you can see right here, IL-6, tumor necrosis alpha, and IL-8 were lower in the intervention group. So you can lower pro-inflammatory mediators in your body by doing the Wim Hof method. And here is the title of this research paper. It's literally how you would turn on your immune system. And just for kicks and giggles, the video at the bottom of this page goes over neuroprogression, the hidden mechanics of depression research paper. But check this out right? Excitotoxicity glutamate stimulates nuclear transcription, a factor K, which is all totally irrelevant. But what you need to pay attention to here is interleukin six and eight. We're all higher, higher levels of oxidative stress reflects in genetic testing, higher levels of interleukin six reflects in genetic testing. Well, do you think depression is uh, genetic or environmental or both? I'm going to tell you that it's both. Because when you look at research and you start to see that we're establishing in our own bodies circuits of inflammatory excited, excitotoxicity oxidative damage sounds terrible, but it's very real. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this one because this is for people who are having autoimmune or inflammatory based conditions. You're more than welcome to just go to the Wim Hof website itself. But rheumatoid arthritis, RA, IBD, inflammatory bowel disease. So when you look at these, you can see, holy crap. Okay, so just by breathing and adding a cold shower into my life, I can start to manage my symptoms naturally. And then that's one step of the many steps that you've learned on this page already. So, you know, just adding cold showers into your life could help prevent things from happening. Because if your immune system is compromised, well, you have a likelihood of developing some sort of sickness or illness. And what I think a lot of people might not think about 
is you might be good now, but what about the next 20 years of your life? You just, we just magically think we're going to stay the same. A lot of people start developing things 40 plus. When you're younger than 40, remember our telomeres, they're good. They're still there. But when our telomeres start to go away and then DNA and chromosomes start to change themselves, illness presents itself. So your first research paper you're going to be reading is about the voluntary activation of your immune system itself. So one of the Google cues you can learn about is vagal tone stimulation with cold water. I don't know if you've ever watched any sort of those medical shows. I think it was The Resident. I think it's called The Resident. But this one lady was having heart problems. Guy walks in, throws ice water on her face and she goes <gasps> so it brings her right back so vagal tone stimulation and when you do the cold showers if you put the cold water right here and you've never done it before you should probably start to feel your body convulse now talk to your doctor talk to your pcp talk to somebody smarter than me uh, most doctors don't even learn the wim hof method like i said that's only new information in the medical school textbooks so uh maybe talk to your doctor maybe they know what this is maybe they don't know what this is if they've never heard of this before Maybe consider talking to a naturopath or working with a company that knows what this stuff is. But the coolest part of the Wim Hof method, I would say, is that moment where your body is literally convulsing in the cold water. And then after you're done, holy shit. Like, your energy levels go through the roof. Like, I remember the first time I did it, I was literally in the shower, like, going, like, just like this massive amount of energy came out of my body. But as you can see right here, decreasing heart rate, stimulating the intestines, and turning on the immune system. So do not do the Wim Hof method if you have just eaten food. This goes into that fight or flight type activity. So if we're trying to rest and digest, we definitely don't want to be going playing huff and puff and getting the freezing cold water and stimulate like our body's dying. So just warning, don't eat then Wim Hof method. Just take my advice on that one. I've done it before. Not a good idea. So now if you do your own self study on cold water therapy, there's going to be a lot of information on the internet that you only need to do it for 11 minutes. Now I would like to refer back to the meditation video for this where a lot of people will tell you you only have to meditate for 15 20 minutes. Well, the hour long meditations, the limbic system, the changing of the amygdala function in your body, being able to shrink the amygdala versus having no effect on the amygdala at all. The 11 minutes seems pretty reasonable for the average human being who wants to be able to benefit themselves in the line of health. But if you read science evidence based on hydrotherapy and various systems of our body, we scroll down over here, we get to where we are in the time area. So you've got one hour head out of water immersions with different temperatures. And then one hour didn't do anything, didn't change anything. And they're talking like rectal temperatures. So I don't know if you're taking your rectal temperature here, but you know, I, I wouldn't suggest going that far into it. But when you're looking at what you should do, I really want you to make your own decisions on this. Yes, there are benefits from getting in and doing the 11 minutes. So doing like one to three minutes every single day. And then if you take off one day, there are definite benefits behind that. You really only need to stimulate the immune system, stimulate your vagal turn, tone, get the mammalian divers reflex active. But beyond that, I want you to kind of do your own research because now you have immersions, uh, 20 degrees Celsius, decreased plasma. So what do we, what do we do here, right? And this is where you really don't want to wander around the internet. There's a lot of people that are doing it one specific way. That's great. But once again, do you have any specific needs that you're trying to work with? So when you isolate, okay, rheumatoid arthritis, and you think, all right, do I want to be on pills the rest of my life? Maybe not. Look further into these types of things. Really, truly understand them. And then maybe go to the source first. So like, you know, I'm just here to pass on information and awesome. If you want to go change your life with it, it's the whole goal. But like the internet will tell you to do one thing. And then when you look into research papers, it'll tell you to do another thing. So who's true? The influencer online that knows they're speaking to a large target audience and they want to make sure that the information is digestible for other people or the truth that is terrible, long, horrible sounding, and no one wants to do it. But when you're reading through this paper, pay attention to dopamine concentrations percentage increased. Because they say that your dopamine will go up by X hundred percent. I think it was like 300% online. Well, immersions in 14 degrees Celsius. 
So increase dopamine by 530%. So this is where doing your own research. <laughs> yeah, when you're done taking a really freezing cold shower, holy shit. And then cortisol with a blood test. If you have high cortisol, cold showers decrease cortisol. So there's a lot of benefits behind cold showers. And if you're not already convinced just based on these two little bits of research to start doing cold showers, oh, there's more. Like the fact that regular winter swimming significantly decreased tension, fatigue, memory, mood negative state points. Like, and then significantly increased vigorous activity scores. Vigorous activity scores correlate over to release of brain-derived neurotrophin factor. So if we've watched the BDNF video, if we've watched the meditation video, if we're watching all of this video right here, we're starting to connect a lot of dots together. Like, if I'm trying to do vigorous exercise to produce my brain-derived neurotrophin factor and taking cold showers or regularly swimming in the winter is good for me. It sounds crazy to swim in the winter. And then you've got suffering from rheumatoidism, fibromyalgia, arthritis, improved general well-being think about this truly ask yourself do i feel the best i've ever felt in my life like if i was not here tomorrow did i do everything that i've ever wanted to do in my life today those are real questions like cold showers oh yeah you tell the average person take a freezing cold shower and they say oh my god no i can't ah freak out right another thing you'll learn in these is about the anxiety response where our natural anxiety response you really can't control that you just freak the hell out Right? You're in an unknown situation, you freak the hell out, you have no control over it. Cold showers, you're in a controlled environment, you're consciously introducing yourself into this and you're freaking the hell out, but you're consciously controlling that freak out. So now imagine you layer in meditating an hour every single day with taking a cold shower every single day, how much better you're going to get at training your brain to properly manage anxiety when it arises. And then eventually in time, I'd say, just based on personal experience, that you shouldn't experience anxiety anymore. It should just be, no, anxiety's not here. No, thanks. Yeah, double it and give it to the next person that is willing to believe that anxiety is real, right? You know, double it and give it to them because I don't want that stuff. So the Wim Hof method plus meditation, ah, anxiety, oh, but the microbiome video as well. So now we're not consuming too much sugar. We're meditating. We're doing the Wim Hof method. Where's the anxiety going to come from then? So take away from this research paper, it's going to help you realize that when the internet tells you, oh, just do 11 minutes. Yeah, everybody do 11 minutes. Yay, 11 minutes, you know, social media. Well, here you go. 15 minutes for cardiovascular functions. So you got heart problems, could be beneficial to you. Talk to your doctor, talk to your PCP, talk to somebody smarter than me. I just don't want you to have people on the internet tell you things and then just because they're a doctor, you're like, oh, well, it must be true because they're, you know, they're a doctor. Oh, great. They're not a doctor on the Wim Hof method. They're not a researcher researching the Wim Hof method. There's somebody who can read medical research like anybody else. But then we like to create these pillars in society where, oh, yeah, just meditate for 15 minutes and then never affect your amygdala. Oh, yeah, take a cold shower for like a minute or two. And then miss out on all the other research. So this is the part of self-study. You got to do it because once you've done it, you'll never have to worry about getting incorrect information ever again. It's like having a genomics test and knowing that, okay, well, CD36, uh, high fat taste perception. Well, I like the keto diet. Avocados are good for me versus GLUT2, higher sugar taste preferences. Like there's a reason why some people do a really good time at fasting, have a really bad time at fasting. Some people go to the gym and they're like, hell yeah, I feel better versus I really don't want to go to the gym. Like everybody is a little bit different that has different needs. If we were all the same, then there wouldn't be like 900 billion different brands of food in the grocery store. So first book you're going to want to read is The Wim Hof Method or The Iceman. They're kind of the same. I couldn't really tell you how many times they've rewritten this stuff, but I started with The Iceman. But The Wim Hof Method, probably the both. I assume that this is going to give us a little bit about a story because you definitely want to understand a story. But if you read The Iceman, that'll give you a story. This one, not 100%. But in these books, 
what they're really going to do is go over the breathing, which you can easily find on YouTube. You can learn it yourself. Go to a retreat with Wim Hof. Like, just sign up and go do it. It's amazing. Cold. You're going to learn about whether or not you're doing it outside or inside. And then with mindset, it's mind over matter. And then to give you some feedback on this really quick, like, you know, safe, controlled environments, like shock-free practices using this, like, you do not want to go into shock. You do not want to mess around with this. Like, once you start going and doing this stuff outside, well, you better find somebody just as crazy as you to go with you who's not going to panic if something bad happens. So my advice, uh, talk to your doctor, talk to your PCP, talk to somebody smarter than me. Let somebody know if you're going to do this stuff because, I mean, it's very real. And to give you some advice, I've done this by myself, right? I used to go on hikes in the winter in nothing but boots and my boxers. It's the most amazing thing ever. Everyone else looks at you like you're a crazy person. I'll tell you that. People are like, aren't you cold? And you're like, <laughs> hell no. You ever heard of the Wim Hof Method? And they're like, what's that? And then I'm like, check out the homeostasisdiet.com. So, you know, little pitch there. But yeah, you know, boots, boxers, like barefoot, it's really cold. Like if you're new to the Wim Hof method, your fingers are going to be freezing cold. Your toes are going to get freezing cold. You have little muscles attached to every blood vessel. And as you learn to do this, they'll open themselves. So you won't get that freezing cold hand. Like you knew when to go outside in the cold and you're like, you have to type like a 17,000 word essay. And you're like, that eventually goes away to the point where you're cold and your hands work just like normal. And then when you do this stuff outside, I can tell you based on trial and error, you're going to find in some of the research, it talks about like it burning glucose. So like for type two diabetics, another beneficial thing for type two diabetes, fucking cold showers. So if you go do this fasted, I had an issue doing it fasted. So like I would go out in the winter to a waterfall that wasn't frozen and I would go in the water and for some reason, I couldn't stop the shivering process. You're supposed to be able to switch off your shivering thermogenesis. And a fun fact about shivering thermogenesis, so the brown fat that's produced here, shivering thermogenesis, babies can't shiver. They have not developed the connections in their brain to shiver to warm themselves. So they've got brown fat. So they're just constantly always warm. They don't even have to think about it. It's why babies don't shiver. And then once you get older, we lose some of that. We develop the option to shiver. And then now we just shake uncontrollably to warm ourselves up. So fun fact, um, be careful when you do the Wim Hof method outside by yourself. And don't fast when you do it. Because what I've learned from trial and error and just testing it out myself, if I fast for three days and I do the Wim Hof method, for some reason I can't warm myself up. But if I've had a meal and then I go do the Wim Hof method two hours later, I'm perfectly fine. But when he says, um, we alter the collective consciousness by awakening our boundless potentials, I can tell you that it's a very unbalancing force when you see a person in the dead of winter in their underpants. Someone's usually like, hey, but it's also like, what the hell's going on over here? That's the number one response that I would get walking around outside my underpants in the winter. But hey, you know what? It's science. And then if anybody ever tells you you're weird because you're doing some weird shit that doesn't make sense, yeah, yeah. Go read the book, um, The Hidden Messages in Water, and then go make clouds erase themselves out of the sky with your consciousness and tell me that ain't weird. But when someone tells you you're weird, here's your go-to response. I'm weird. I think you're weird for thinking I'm weird for being healthy. Get away from me. And then maybe insert get the blank away from me if you're that type of person but you get the point across and if you're looking to learn more about Wim Hof himself it is the way of the Iceman I think that other book's going to go into a little bit more of the science behind it versus this book going into a little bit more of the story behind it so if you've never learned about his story it's super awesome stuff and then you know he's got a bad hairdo too so I guess you know a lot of smart people have bad hairdos uh, at least based on statistics so, you know, this guy's talking about running marathons in the freezing cold, 90 minutes in water. You don't have to go that extreme with it unless you feel like being, you know, the iceberg man 2.0 or something. Use these pieces of information as just little anchors in your life. If I'm going to go take a shower, should I take a warm shower? Maybe if I'm sweaty and disgusting, I probably want to take, and that, that's what you would do. We'll discuss that at the end for taking the cold showers. Actually, I'll just make a video down below explaining them to you. Instead of just making this one big massive pack, you know, conglomerate of information. But like, 
you know, a little bit of warm, bring the blood vessels to the surface, bam, cold, let's go, Wim Hof method. But if you've not learned about his story, it's really cool. And really, there's not too much complexity behind this. Like you, it's it's very fixed in nature. You must go into cold water for the Wim Hof method to activate. And then if you want to do some like self-education and study, brown fat, you can learn about that. Um, another fun, good one would be shivering thermogenesis. So we're just going to grab this and then we're going to do... We're gonna do shivering thermogenesis would be another good one. So brown fat, shivering thermogenesis. So like the body's response to sudden cold. And like when you're taking the showers, like you will, you might have that shiver response, but then that's a do the breathing. So in the next video down below, we're gonna go over cold showers together. And it's finally summer here, so I can't go lay in the snow with you. Oh, but we'll do that next year because it's really honestly more fun to go lay outside in the snow when it's snowing in like a pair of shorts, just throw on some swimming trunks, go outside the snow, lay there and just, just relax and enjoy how beautiful it is to be alive and be able to do all this cool stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, I'm sorry that I didn't give you too many books on this one, kind of just underestimated or overestimated how much information there was on this. It's really very straightforward. Uh, cold water or warm water, get in blood vessels, cold water, Wim Hof method. Uh, in the video down below, I'm going to go over a little bit more on how you would begin to do the cold showers with a little bit more of an outline that is also on the homeostatic line document. It'll tell you about cold showering. It'll give you the information as well. So uh, if you're watching this video on YouTube, as always, feel free to comment down below. If you're watching this video on the website, there's going to be a PDF document in one of these directions, it's actually going to be that direction. I hate this mirrored thing. I always think, hey, I'm pointing to the left, but it's pointing to the right on here, and then you might see it. I don't know. You're going to see it pointing that way. But there should be a document linked over here as well that's going to explain a little bit about the Wim Hof Method, give you some links, give you some books. So the book that I mentioned should be in there. And if you need anything, comment down below. I'll make some more videos for you. I hope you have a beautiful day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.